Hi everyone, this is the uh, fourth video in my um, short educational series um, and this one is uh, part one of price action. Okay, I'm going to talk about price rejection, supply and demand consumption, price compression and liquidity spikes. Um, but first, just a bit of a recap. Um, you'll note from the examples in my last video that, are, that there are times that we can pinpoint the exact origin of the supply and demand imbalance that caused a reaction and or a breakout at an SR zone. Okay. Now, this can obviously come in great use when formulating trading strategies around SR zones and SD zones. Okay. And trading, basing trading strategies around SR zones and SD zones is logical because these are clear areas on our price charts that represent significant institutional order flow. Okay, In order to reject price from a, a certain area or to move price in a volatile way it requires, requires institutional order flow, it's not retail order flow, it requires significant order flow in the market which comes from the institutional institutional space. Okay, And as I've mentioned previously SR zones and SD zones are great places because they have a history okay they have history as areas where the market has rejected price in the past okay so they're historical areas where we have seen institutional order flow okay now when I talk about finding the origin of a supply demand imbalance and thus where that where the decision was made to either break out of an SR level or retrace away from it, like I did in my previous video, um, I'm always referring to the most likely zones. Okay, we can never be, well, we can rarely be a hundred percent certain where the decision was made when we zoom into the very low time frames. Okay, nothing is ever a hundred percent in trading. We're always working on the on the basis of probabilities. Okay, um, sometimes identifying these zones will be clear. Um, just like the ones I showed in my last video uh, and straightforward and sometimes they were not I and mean, we sometimes we weren't able to identify zones at all okay now when it comes to price action I've talked about and I, I've kind of shown that you know the first time back to a supply demand zone or, or SR zone or following a breakout represents the highest chance of a further rejection of that area by price because that is the most likely time that we're going to have a large amount of unused supply and demand, supply or demand left in that zone, okay? But we can also look at price action, okay? The price action when price is approaching the zone in question or in the zone in question to determine with some probability as to what price is likely to do next, okay? So this is what this video is basically all about looking at looking at price action. Well, the fir first first of two parts, looking at price action as a way to determine and to increase the probabilities of our knowledge of knowing what price would do when it approaches an SR zone or an SD zone. Okay. Now, price rejection is merely the action of price moving away from an SD zone or an SR zone. I don't need to really go into detail on that. I'll show that on the charts. It's really a rejection of price and that's what an SR zone is, okay? It's a rejection of price at multiple times in an area, okay, by the market, okay? Now, supply and demand consumption. Consumption is the action of price absorbing demand or supply, okay? The most common way to see this is on a chart in a strong trend, okay? Now, you can see this in, the, in this example on, on the chart, okay, we have an uptrend and price spikes upwards as it moves up and these spikes, these wicks on the top of the bars are consuming supply, okay, consuming a supply and paving the way for price to move higher, okay, and the same on the way down, as we move down we have wicks on the underside of the bars as we have demand consumption, price is consuming demand and paving the way for the for price to move lower. Okay. See it again on these two examples. A downtrend, strong downtrend, wicks on bar lows as we move down, represent demand consumption, paving the way for price to move lower. And vice versa on the way up, wicks at the bar highs, supply, consumption paving the way for price to move higher. 
as well as consumption in the form just described, we can also see consumption in the way price moves into an SR or SD zone, i.e. focusing on the bar movements rather than, rather than the wicks, okay? So let me look at the next example. Okay, so instead of a, a strong trend, we see a sort of a gradual trend into a support uh, where it's a support resistance area and also a previous uh, demand zone. Okay, so notice that as price moves down, it, it breaks through an SR level, moves back, retests it, breaks down, moves back, retests it, breaks down, moves back, retests it. Okay, in doing this, we are consuming supply at each retest of these breakout areas. We are consuming supply at these these minor SR areas. Okay. So when this happens, when we hit, when we hit the uh, the big demand area, demand comes into the market, and because we consume the supply on the move back that move into the demand area, it paves the way for a, a, a very high momentum move back up. Okay. Move on to another example. The same thing is happening here. We have a move into a resistance area a strong um, resistance area. How do we move into it? We move into it in a, an equidistant channel. Break out, come back, retest. Break out, come back, retest. Okay, and moving in a, a zigzag pattern on, on the way into it. Okay, so that is consuming demand whilst moving into a supply area. When it's met by the, when we meet, hit the supply, the way down has been paved by the demand consumption on the way up. Okay. So therefore we see and we expect to see the momentum move back down because there's a lack of demand in this area okay okay so moving, <coughs> moving on to price compression compression is a squeezing of price um, traditionally compression leads to um, a high momentum move okay and it's often accompanied by supply and demand consumption as just mentioned as I just talked about okay um, move on to some examples Okay, if we look at this example here, we have a clear SR pivot zone. And if you look at the way price is moving into this area, it is, is a rising wedge essentially. It's a converging wedge. It's what I call a converging wedge. But um, what is actually happening from a price action perspective is compression. Price moving up in a, a wedge like fashion whilst dipping to consume demand. Okay, so it's exactly the same as what we were talking about before. and just previously in terms of demand consumption but, it, but but we also have accompanying compression either squeezing of price whilst moving into um, the resistance area or supply area and then of course we have the momentum move back down to the source the source of the move into the resistance okay so squeezing of price demand consumption wedge like pattern good momentum move back down okay that's what we expect, and that's the price action involved in the in this in this pattern. Okay. Another example. One hour resistance zone. A strong move down. We start compressing on the way up, dipping down to consume demand in a wedge like converging wedge like pattern. Okay. Move down once, move back up before dropping, eventually dropping back, dropping uh, with high momentum back down. Okay. Another example, converging wedge, moving into a support zone whilst whilst rising, and therefore consuming demand until a point where we price is squeezed so much we get the volatile breakout, the good momentum breakout. Okay, so we've talked about price rejection, we've talked about demand and supply consumption, we've talked about compression. Okay, the last thing I'm going to talk about in this video is liquidity sp spikes. I'm only just going to briefly go over this because I'm going to talk about it a lot more in a lot more detail um, in one of my future videos. Okay, liquidity spikes are short, sharp moves preceding a reversal. Okay, they can essentially be a stop loss hunt and can trap novice traders into following the direction of the move and getting trapped when the reversal comes. Okay, so in this case. 
this is a higher time frame so this is say for example a one hour SR I think it's actually higher I think it's a four hour SR okay so it's a higher time frame support resistance and this is a much lower time frame chart okay so on the higher time frame these these two will appear as just a wick so a wick maybe a pin bar can't quite foresee it but um, it will appear as a wick in terms of a false breakout above this SR okay but on the lower time frame you can see exactly what's happening in terms of we are compressing into this well, it's more consumption we have demand consumption into this resistance zone okay you can see the breakout retests of minor SR levels approaching the higher, term, higher time frame resistance level okay we then get a spike up and that spike is immediately reversed back down and following that we then get the expected price action in terms of the movements the the strong the strong move from the supply area relative to the move into the resistance area okay so this is where novice traders will get trapped because they'll see this big move and think oh we've had a breakout we're going up and you know get involved and pure breakout traders will get involved and this is why you see a term set as trap but what this is is this is just it's termed a liquidity spike okay it's a it's a hunt for liquidity um, from stop losses etc um, and it's often preceding a sharp reversal the sharp reversal confirms that it's a liquidity spike spike okay these aren't overly easy to to um, to spot at time especially in real time but if you go over your charts and, and just watch how price moves into a certain resistance area and look for these on the very low time frames um, and you can see you'll be able to spot the big move into it and the sudden reversal and that confirms it's a liquidity spike okay okay well that concludes this video is part one of price action and the next video I'm going to talk about some continuation common continuation reversal patterns that I use in my trading so there's a, um, a select number that I use okay